him and the tree gets lit up with gun gunshots and hits on the tree, and then he runs over to where that gentleman is right now and hides behind that house. He sits there for a little bit, they fire at him there. He took and what he sees is the guy with a rocket launcher. And at that point, it's time for Jack Bauer to go. So he runs and takes off, and when he takes off that way, this building behind me, kaboom. So I'm a little nervous <laughs> for that part. See that camera over there? Yeah. OK, that camera, there was a guy, there was a guy in a red hat over there, OK? See him? The guy behind the camera? Well, he's actually, he will be in front at the time. He's hiding right now until you get to the tree, OK? Uh, so okay. he comes out, he's over there like that, and you fire at him. Okay. okay, put down a couple shots at him and he'll fall out of frame. Now it's like, see what's going over here, turn to look. You got this two camera. Guys, two guys split. Here, no, this is the rocket launcher. Okay, oh. see the rocket launcher, oh, and just go into here. And it's done. The rocket worked great. This third one, we're gonna shoot down the wire. It's a real simple gag, but we love it. It's always very impressive. Ready, on action! Everybody is incredibly alert uh, when that starts, and there's an adrenaline rush, which, which actually uh, is immensely helpful uh, for an actor, just because those situations, you would be in a state of fear. ever worked with a storyboard you really need to know what you want to shoot but we don't want it to be so specific that you start missing what Kiefer Sutherland brings to it what Robert Carlyle brings to it you know what Cherry Jones brings to it these are all really seasoned professional actors so you want to, you want to give them a blocking that still gives them the room to explore their characters just experience gives you the ability to just do it all in your head basically I've shot the movie I've shot it right from the very beginning right to the very end every single scene I've made in my I just gotta communicate it to everybody else, including the actors, and make sure they're making the same movie that I want to make in my head. Action! So basically, Jack runs up this hill and hides behind this big log. Now, I picked this because you can see the background is absolutely spectacular, especially this time of, this time of night with the sun setting and the hills all lit up. We've just put these squibs on like this all through here. Uh, we've got cork block. We'll also supplement it with the dust guns. A lot of stuff going off. Just keeping the frames lively. So Jack is hiding back here. Now he's in real trouble. He's got the machine gun, but he's only got a little, a uh, little bit of bullets left. But he does have a couple of sticks of dynamite. One guy gets a little adventurous, thinks he can sneak up on him, hides behind his wood pile. We don't have balsa wood here, so uh, Scott took, took some of this uh, floral foam and carved these logs up. Uh, MJ's painters did their magic to make it. So we'll set these up. What we didn't want is this explosion to go off and nothing to go in the air. These are maroons. They're, uh, they're powder down here. And then we're going to put a pusher in and peat moss, cork, and uh, some of the fake logs that Stan told you about. A piece of dynamite comes lobbing over, lands at his feet. That gets rid of him. Ready? And action. Good. Great, great, great. Absolutely great. Today, we've got Jack and Benton, played by Robert Carlyle and Kiefer Sutherland, of course. The history between Jack and Benton is, is extensive. They came up through the Special Forces together. That bond and that friendship uh, is that of brothers in arms. They've got their kids. They're towing them through the jungle and uh, trying to get away from Dubaku and his men. How many men? Just Benetton? Or is he with that bat brother? There were two men. Along the river would be their fastest route. It's been pretty good so far. They've been going through the jungle, nothing's happening, but suddenly they come across this bridge over here, and uh, as they go across, they come out into an opening, and just at that point, around this river bend, comes this very mean-looking helicopter, comes through, and there's a stuntman hanging on the right side, fires with a machine gun. Uh, and as you can see, the, the effects guys are putting in the hits into the mud. And at this point, too, it's interesting because Jack and, and Benton are splitting up. He says, thanks for helping us. Go down this river and you're safe. And of course, the helicopter keeps Jack in the game. And Jack and Benton get all the kids safely into the forest. This scene doesn't have any dialogue except for Kiefer saying, uh, Carl, 
Kids run and everyone runs. The dialogue part is done. This is only for the action part with the chopper. And action! Get the kids out of the place! Run! Run! After we do a couple of runs looking back at the helicopter with Kiefer in the foreground and the kids, then we're going to actually put a camera inside the helicopter and be over the, uh, the man with the machine gun shooting down and seeing Dubaku's point of view of the children. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to be here like this. We're going to say action. The helicopter comes around. Everyone looks at the helicopter. They say run. You run into the woods. The helicopter is like Thailand, eh? Run. What are you doing? I like the fact that you had the corner. That was the key to my to the thing. Because if it was a long river, then you would see the helicopter coming for, forever, basically. So this gave us a great ability to have that chopper be right on them right away. You've got to remember that Benton and Jack are two guys that were in special forces. They would know when a helicopter is attacking them. So this gives you that huge element of surprise. And if they're surprised, our audience is surprised. Actually, I like it back further, because the longer I'm out here, the more dangerous it gets. Ready and tell him to come through. Come through. Here he comes. Here he comes. Wait. Ready? Go. Now. Shoot at him. Okay, land him. I play Willie. Is the the boy that lost his whole family and then he's left with Mr. Benton since he's the head of the school. Jack Bauer was leaving, so he was one of the people that I looked up to in the whole movie and I felt a connection with him and like when he had to go away, it was like ripping a part of my heart away, yeah. One of the most miraculous things is just working with, they've been unbelievably great. The young actors that are here, the local acting talent has been wonderful, uh, very important to our story, and they've been really strong. They certainly have their fun during the day, but when we go to work, we're just really excited to do it, and their willingness to kind of play all the parts and do all that stuff has just been kind of extraordinary. Working with Kiefer has been out of this world. He's got the pace of a racehorse and um, he learns lines in like seconds and it's been honestly a nerve-wracking experience <laughs> but it's one of those things that if you can go through a 24 set you can do anything. The kids have been remarkably good. I understand how they've kept up and you know we've, we've worked them hard. They've gone the full 10 hours, they've done a lot of running around but they managed to keep their attention. It's my first serious movie role and it's like it changed me. It's it's what I didn't expect. Working with Keeper has been a real a real pleasure. I've only had one scene with him at the moment, but uh, you know it's been a real pleasure working with somebody of caliber and 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 that sort of generosity as an actor. So um, yeah, I feel very uh, honoured to be part of this actually. You don't have a chance to to mess up your lines. You don't have a chance to miss a beat. You miss a beat, and he gives you that look. And it's just the pace. I've just learned the pace and the professionalism of everyone. It's been outstanding and it's been, thank God they came to Africa. These actors are so fantastic because they've never done it before and yet they have the imagination of a child. So you can tell them in a variety of languages. This is a situation where we want you to either be happy or we want you to be sad or we want you to be excited or scared. And they're so unbelievably responsive that it's been an absolute pleasure. And I think it's just, you know, like anything, that is very new to these children and to see a film crew and a bunch of people from a, from a country far away has been exci as exciting, I hope, for them as it has been for us. <laughs> 24 has always been the one sort of right on the leading edge of any new trend in television. And I think we are again. We're the work that we've been able to do here. They're shooting, as you can tell. You've got Kiefer Sutherland, and he's putting in the best work of his life. And so you know that you're going to come there and, and play with an actor that's giving 100%. John is unbelievably prepared. It's great to see Jack out in the wild. John, thanks for bringing me to Africa. <laughs> You're very welcome. Like a 10 hour day, thanks, Kiefer. We're in Africa, and we're here shooting the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you don't listen. Ah. Ow. Ow. Thanks, Kiefer.
Well, there you have it. Your exclusive behind-the-scenes look at the making of 20... Please be sure to watch it November 23rd. And remember that Season 7 begins this January on Fox. I've been here in Africa working on 24, and I've learned a great deal about one of the deadliest diseases known to man. I'm talking about malaria. It kills a child every 30 seconds. The world is rallying to stop this enemy using a $10 mosquito net. This is one critical mission everyone can be a part of. Please, if you want to help, visit malarianomore.org.